let's go back to the start of your career. Uh, started racing in 2001 through 2003 in the cruiser class. Yeah. Now, did I understand you right when we talked about this before? Was that you and your brother? or Yes. And, yes. And you both raced in there. How did you guys do in that cruiser class up there at Thunder Hill and Heartland Park? Oh, we did real good. At Thunder Hill, we uh, we started out, you know, in a class that we didn't expect to grow up and go any further in. Uh, when we started, it was a good time. That was time. all you were going to do? Yeah, <laughs> you know, it was fun. Yeah. You know, and uh, we started in the class and uh, was pretty compatible the first year, and, and we got into it the next year and uh, started racing at Heartland Park and Thunder Hill. Mm-hmm. Well... We got into it with a couple of folks out at Heartland Park, and it decided to make us run hard and go for points. Uh-huh. Well, we, we did that. We ran good. We won uh, 14, 14 races out of both tra- oh, wow. out, of, out of one year <laughs> from both tracks. Mm-hmm. Won points at Heartland Park and uh, took second at Thunder Hill. Yeah. So, you know, it was, it was an enjoyable year that year. Very yeah. enjoyable. I was going to say, winning's always fun. Oh, yeah, definitely. <laughs> definitely. Without a doubt. Uh, when you're doing pretty good like that in a class and – what is it that you decide to say, well, I think I'd like to move up. I mean, you know, I'm enjoying this cruiser here a little bit, but boy, street stocks are looking pretty good. What What is it determines when you're going to make that move? Well, to me, it was, it was, it was I knew that we had to do something because that class was, was dying out. Oh, okay. But uh, also, you had a lot of people that were trying to get in that class and didn't they, they they couldn't they couldn't do good because you already knew all the secrets of it yeah. and uh, <laughs> it was time to move up uh-huh. but uh, but to me you know that was that was mainly it because right there is i is I, I knew i had to move up because yeah. it just it was just uh dominance ain't a good thing yeah. all the time yeah. you know what i'm saying i was gonna say you never get tired of winning but <laughs> <laughs> exactly it, it, maybe it's time to try something else uh, exactly exactly I, I, plus i think a lot of times too it's the idea that you feel like you're kind of a successful at it doing pretty good you know maybe maybe we step up a little bit see what we can do up there give somebody else a chance right yeah okay so in 2004 then you decide to uh jump into the factory stock and this is at lakeside speedway that you decide to do that now that had to have been a pretty good jump for you guys that was a big jump that was an, that was an eye opener right there that was an eye opener <laughs> you know them guys are tough uh-huh. tough tough but yeah it was it was a, a big step okay you know i i checked in uh i think it was for the points this year at lakeside and of the top five of which you were in but the top five that finished in the points at lakeside this year were all either guys that had raced in higher classes or veterans mm-hmm. so that's got to speak of just really how tough it is in that class to run. Uh, do you think personally that that's a, a good deal for racers in, in the street stock class to have that stiff a competition? I mean, is it is it a good learning experience? Is, I mean, is the bar set too high? Or do a lot of racers get frustrated when they start facing the reality who they got to race with? Well, the way I see it is, is you're, anybody has got the choice to go back in a class. And... I don't care if it's a modified driver or a late model guy. They can always come back to that class. Uh-huh. Um, now, what makes it better, I think, for people like me and uh, everybody starting that class, there, there's the guy you got to catch. Mm-hmm. There's the guy you got to learn from. You, you get behind and drive behind him. Uh, Tim Shields taught me a few lessons there last yeah. year, or a couple of years ago, and you know, it taught me how fast I needed to go. Uh-huh. And when he when he did that, it, it made me a better driver. And this year, Buzz Buzz Caster. He taught me some more lessons, yeah. you know. Uh, but now I feel, I feel like I'm starting to teach some lessons too. Uh-huh. You know? But uh, you know, it makes it funner. But for the guys that can't run up there right away, it, it, it's a three-year deal. Uh-huh. You know, it's going to take a few years to yeah. get in that seat. Right. Uh, but hey, I take take my head off to all them guys. Yeah. <laughs> them guys. Them guys are mean. They're good time. <laughs> okay. So you're running in the street stocks and up until I believe it's 2007, and you were in the top 10 points for those uh, two or three years that mm-hmm. you ran in there, top 10 yeah. all along. So, yeah. you know, it's kind of being consistent. And then all of a sudden, <laughs> Terry decides he wants to go out on a limb a little bit. Yeah. And you decide to jump out on a modified. Now, uh, when I talked to you over the phone, you were very explicit about this experience <laughs> that you had with the modified. If I could just use some of the words that you used Go to ahead. me on the phone, such as frustrated, oh yeah, respect of the other drivers, definitely understanding definitely. the equipment, uh, on the adjustments on the car, uh, was it uh, a really steep 
learning experience for you or was it the fact that maybe you needed some more technical help as far as running with the modified because it sounds like you just didn't really enjoy it oh it was it was tough it, you know it was fun building the car or getting the car together but when you when i got to go start racing it i didn't know enough about what the car wanted me to do or how to set it set it up uh-huh. you know that that that's a car there where you don't drive the car you mean you, you gotta let the car you gotta set the car up so you can drive it yeah well uh, we wouldn't put thing putting things in the right places, you know, and <laughs> it, it showed. But you know, uh, it, it was, it was, yeah, it was very frustrating. And at the same time, I was trying not to, to take other people's cars yeah. out. Yeah, it's, that's 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 a sport there that too expensive to tear people's cars yeah. out. Plus your own, you uh, know. Yeah. But but uh, it was rough. Yeah. <laughs> I'll just I, put it that yeah. way. <laughs> well, and I think the thing that kind of stuck out to me about it too was the deal about respect of the other drivers. Mm-hmm. Uh, boy, that says a lot, right? To uh, to me about yeah. you as a driver and the other guys that you drive with for somebody to respect you know yeah. that much of the class itself should a person maybe start in b mods before they go to a i think so now now that they're out there uh definitely because it's it's a stepping you know it's, it's a stepping stone uh-huh. each time you step into it you got you don't have to jump into the to the ultimate ultimate class you uh-huh. know the b mods still they're they're great don't i take nothing away from them but you know at least it's a smaller engine you know you you got you got some you got some ways to get into it and, and you ain't jumped into the great big pool at one time right you, know, you jump jump into a small pond and you, uh. be, you know be a big fish <laughs> in a small pond for a while after a year of frustration though you do decide to go back into the street stocks and really when you look back over the year that you had you got to be pretty well satisfied i mean other oh, than yeah. that last three weeks oh I mean, yeah being second and possibly in or being third in points possibly second you got to be satisfied i'm very happy i'm very happy you know i'm happy with that and happy with because of uh, what a track you know a track is is prepared awesome every weekend mm-hmm. you know you can't complain you gotta go up there and, and race them all hard and mm-hmm. and give it all you got and be out but i'm very happy with it very yeah. happy now what's what's in store for uh, you next year? What are you going to be doing, Terry? You got any ideas? It's going to be street stocks again? Oh, I'm sure. I wasn't. I was kind of thinking maybe not there for a while, but uh, I've got a guy I can't tell you about yet. Oh, okay. He, he's uh, <laughs> he's wanting me to race at uh, either at Heartland Park or at Thunder Hill, and I'm probably also going to race this thing at Lakeside on yeah. Friday night. So I'm probably going to be a little busy next year. Going to be busy. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay. What's the racer doing in the off season? I know here we are. We're just sitting out here in the garage. Got the wood stove going. We're all sitting here enjoying the heat. <laughs> got the thing kind of tore down here pretty good. Uh, what's a guy really doing in in the, in the off season? Is it the time to just sit down, and get reacquainted with the family, so to speak? And- exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. You have to get back to, uh, you know, going to kids' games. You know, uh-huh. and getting back to talking to all your friends that you kind of uh, pushed away for the yeah. summer. Uh-huh. Uh, you know everything yeah you gotta work on your cars especially get them back together yeah. uh you know like we do we cut wood we, we burn a lot we burn wood in the shop and the house uh-huh. uh, so you got a lot of work to do there everything uh-huh. but uh it's tough okay but, uh, uh, i think we're about ready for you to tell us something about the people that helped you last year all right well uh, my sponsors mainly is a uh, challenger fence uh valley ag out of, out of valley falls was a good sponsor uh tabs was my sticker company very good they've been real good to me uh mr drywall room materials pearson pearson remodeling mcafee henderson and strick uh royal metal and brant fabricating and uh baker services out of atchison uh we are that's pretty much all my sponsors that had a uh, also had dean ramville and associates at leavenworth uh, I just want to thank all of them for helping out and my family, my pet yeah. crew, my boys. Yeah, forget them guys. <laughs> got to have them guys. If you don't have them guys, you ain't got a car. Yeah. Okay. So. Well, Terry, I think we're going to have to wrap it up here on Shop Talk. We're here with Terry Schmidt, factor stock driver from Lakeside Speedway. <laughs>